From the beginning of the year, the Lord gave us a theme. What is the theme? Divine enlargement through enlargement. <laughs> through what? Not enlargement. Through? Yes. What is outreach? <laughs> outreach is reaching out. Eh? Okay. <laughs> reaching out to people, reaching out to the lost, reaching out to encourage and um, revive those who have cooled off, reaching out and making sure that uh, people's lives are transformed for better. Amen. And uh, in our international Move On Convention 2023, the Lord gave us a theme. What was the theme? It is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. That is um, from Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, which says, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Who was the Zerubbabel? Zerubbabel was a governor huh? um, that was um, uh, reigning or um, governing uh, Israel, Judea, all those places. Huh? Jerusalem and all those places around there. The word says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. And uh, we need to remind one another that when the Lord gives us a task, when the Lord gives us a purpose to live for, when the Lord um, uh, appoints us into a given position, he makes sure that he empowers us and he equips us. When we talk about equipping, we are talking about training. Eh? Training or, or preparation, preparing somebody through training. And when we talk about training, it is um, uh, the process of you doing something, teaching somebody to do something, then you allow them, okay? You allow them to do that thing that you have taught them to do when you are watching. So that in case they make any mistake, they do something differently from the way you taught them, you tell them, come back. Just like driving. Huh? Um, I remember the, uh, my son used to ask me many times when he was very young, Daddy, this road is very straight. Why do you keep turning the wheel this way? I see you are like you are playing with the steering wheel. Yet the road is straight. I said, yes, you may think the road is straight, but um, the vehicle may not be very straight. <laughs> The wheels are not going straight all the time. Eh? Sometimes you hit a pothole and uh, it turns this way. Sometimes, you know, you climb on a pebble or a stone and it, you know, keeps on flipping. So you have to keep on bringing it back to the way. Uh, when it goes to the right too much, you bring it back to the left. When it tries to go to the left too much, you bring it back to the right. So that's why, you know, so um, recently I was asking him when we were driving together, uh, Jerry, why are you playing with the steering? <laughs> and, and he said, you know, Daddy, I, I know where you're coming from. Because <laughs> we had talked that many years back. Hallelujah. So when we talk about training, we are talking about teaching somebody to do something as they watch then you allow them to do it as you watch and correct. Then finally you allow them to continue doing now when they are on their own. You may come later on to check, you know, 
how far they have gone, but they are on their own. The way you are taught how to drive, the instructor is there. They tell you do this, do that, do that. A time comes when um, he just tells you, okay, now let's go. When we get there, we will turn to the right. When we get there, that, that junction there, we will uh, slow down. And uh, he, he or she leaves you to go. And as you are going, as you continue going, you know, some of us learned on uh, manual cars. So um, uh, you need to know, as you are approaching a junction, whatever it is, which gear you should turn to, and such like things. So if he sees, like, um, you are going, you are in gear number four, and you are approaching a junction, and you are not changing your gears, he tells you, which gear are you? Then you remember, if you are intelligent, or if you are a good student, okay? So, that's what we call by training. When we talk about, you know, equipping, we, talk, we are talking about training. We are talking about, you know, um, uh, helping, teaching somebody and, uh, and, and, and working together with them. Then there is what, we, what, what I said after we have been trained or when, we, when the Spirit trains us, he also does what? There are two things I said. <laughs> Empowers us. Huh? Now, when we talk about empowering, we are talking about enablement. Hmm? You enable somebody by um, uh, working with them. You enable them by giving them authority and delegating that authority to them. So you have trained them. You delegate authority to them for them to do certain things. And as you delegate those um, uh, things to those that authority to them, you. Keep checking whether they are um, using that authority the way they are supposed to use it or the way that you allowed them to use it. Sometimes we are um, enabled, we are empowered, but we usurp greater authority than that which we were supposed to be exercising. So we still need to make sure that um, we are around to help one another. When the Spirit of the Lord is upon our lives, he equips us and he enables us. So remember those two things, okay? The Spirit of the Lord comes upon you to equip you and to empower you. So, when, so that you may be a servant of the Lord, you may be a mini, an effective minister, one who is seasoned, one who has been trained, one who has been enabled, one who has been given authority. And when you have that authority, you ensure that you exercise that authority according to how you were given. <clears throat> Amen. It is not by might, nor by, by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. So today, I would like us to share briefly on the subject entitled, The Spirit of the Lord God. What is the meaning of the Spirit of God? What do we mean when we talk about the Spirit of God? We are talking about the empowerment that we receive or the courage that we have when the presence of the Lord is around us. When we talk about the Spirit of the Lord, in brief, we are talking about the presence of God around us. The presence of God, or the manifest presence of God, is all that we need. Okay? Because the Lord is present everywhere, is ever present everywhere. Uh, in one word we say he's omnipresent. He is all the time present and he is everywhere. You cannot hide yourself from the Lord. David, um, in, 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 the, in the Psalms, he said, is it 139? Even if I go to 
the bottom of the sea, your presence will be there. Even if I hide myself in a cave, your presence will be there. Hmm? You know, there is a guy called Prophet Elijah. When he was running away from um, Jezebel, he went and hid himself in a cave. <laughs> and while he was in the cave, the Lord asked him, Elijah, what are you doing here? He thought he had hidden himself. He thought, now God will not find me. Eh? In, a, in other words, like he was saying, God, you have failed me. Hmm? I worked so well for you. I slaughtered the, the, um, uh, the, 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 the prophets of Baal. Eh? I, in, a, in a way, like I performed so many miracles in your name. Eh? Prayed for the rain after three and a half years of drought. And it came yesterday. Hmm? This, you, you know, you enabled me to run so fast that I overtook the chariots hmm, of King Ahab. I got into the city eh, and I grabbed the city before the king came with all his idolatry. But now, the next day, I'm being threatened and you are doing nothing. Hmm? You know, Elijah, I think, had thought that because he had um, done whatever he did the previous day, God was going to uh, maybe slay Jezebel or whatever it is, or Jezebel would hear and would say, eh, if he has done that, I now turn to the, God, the, the living God. Jezebel came and said, the way you did to those prophets of my father's gods. Huh? Tomorrow, God slay me if I don't do the same to you. And the man said, wait. <laughs> A man who had slayed, you know, 400 and what? 450 huh? men, priests of Baal, huh? guys who are holding bulls, by the horns, turning them around and slaughtering them. A bull. Huh? 400, over 400 of them. The man had slaughtered them, all of them, and finished them, silenced them. And he had prayed. He had an anointing. When the woman spoke, a woman Huh? A woman just sent a word <laughs> and the man's knees could not hold him. Huh? Whatever Elijah had done was not in his own might, was not in his own power. It was by the Spirit of the Lord. And you remember when now um, he was um, uh, challenged in that cave and he was told what to do. He was given instructions. One, all the authority that you have, the anointing that you have, now lay it on Elisha. And he had to look for Elisha. Somebody, some theologians say that, you know, Elijah did not like Elisha. But because God had said, he had to go and look for him. And when he found him, he did not talk to him. He just took his mantle and threw it on him. And he continued walking. <laughs> then Elisha, when he received this mantle, he said, now, man of God, what are you doing here? Yeah? He started following him. And uh, he did all, the whole story, you know, what, what it's all about. Because when this man received that mantle falling upon him, there was power. Tell somebody there was power. There was the presence of God that he felt. Some special kind of anointing. He felt a certain presence. Even as Elijah walked away. Amen. So, he did that. Finally, he was told, you will go and anoint Jehu. 
Jehu was now to take over from Ahab. Because when, that was, when, when the ceremony was finished on Mount Carmel, Jezebel was fired from being the queen. Ahab was fired from being the king. And Elijah was also promoted, was demoted upwards. Elijah was demoted upwards. He was told, hand over. And after handing over, you anoint so-and-so to be this, anoint so-and-so to be this, anoint so-and-so to be this. What this one will fail to do, this one will do. What this one will fail to do, this one will do. It's not Elijah. It is not Elisha who killed Jezebel. There was a gentleman called Jehu. And Jehu, who had been anointed now to take over from Ahab as the king now, is the one who entered Jerusalem or entered the city. And when he entered the city, he entered in the power and the anointing that Elijah had used to enter the city before King Ahab and his chariots. You get that? There is power that we receive when we are empowered or when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. He empowers us. He said in Acts chapter 1, verse, um, uh, is it verse 8, and you shall receive when the Holy Spirit does what? Comes upon you. And what will happen? You will go telling everybody, Shalom, Arashanda, Ramashi, Kalabolyanda, Ramashanda. No. What will you do? You shall be my witnesses. Where? And where? And where? And where? Yes. You will start in Jerusalem. You will start with all Jerusalem. In other words, you are going to witness to everybody in Jerusalem. You are going to witness to every... When you finish Jerusalem, you will now move out into Judea. And when you finish ministering to everybody, being a witness to everybody in Judea, you will move to Samaria. And when you finish all the Samaritans, when all of them have been saved eh, and delivered from all the powers of darkness and the prejudices of the Samaritans, now move into all the world. And when you are going, you will also use the people that you have been a witness to. People who have gotten saved. People who are now walking with the Lord, who have turned away from the ways of the world. You will empower them. You will um, train them. And then you will go with them. You will send them. You will say, you, Mburu, go to Central Province. And um, uh, you, um, Nyandiko, we are sending you to Europe. Mm? And, you <laughs> and you, Gishuru, we are sending you to Australia. Mm? You, uh, Jeremiah, we are sending you to the Americas. Huh? Hallelujah. E. Huh? You need uh, Pastor Barasa, we are sending you to the Africans, hmm? not the, the, the southern Sudanese only. Huh? To all the Africans, wherever they are, go and witness to them. You are empowered. Hallelujah. We say that you can never hide yourself from the Lord. He will find you wherever you are. When the Spirit of the Lord falls upon you or comes upon you, He will empower you. He will shake you from all your fears, from all your prejudices, from all tribal, cultural, traditional, whatever prejudices that you have, and will free you. All kinds of attitudes that you have held, 
against other people or people groups. He will free you from them. You will go and witness. Peter was um, not very um, concerned about Gentiles. But you remember when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, when he was in the upper room and he saw the vision of um, uh, all kinds of animals, uh, the, the funny animals that were brought on a platter or whatever it was, and laid before him and told him, he was told that, you know, arise, slay, and eat. You know, the, he was in the upper room, resting, waiting for food, which was being played in the, in the, in, in the, in the lower room, <laughs> in the kitchen downstairs. He was in the upper room praying, and he dozed off, and he saw a vision, and his, that vision came. And he said, no way, I cannot. Lord, you know very well, the scriptures command us not to eat these things. Snakes, scorpions, snails, frogs. E! Eh? And you are told, Bana, rice, buru, inuka, chinja, kula, kula ichura. <laughs> and then, he said, no, 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 no. And what did the Lord tell him? He said, that which I have, that which I have blessed, that which I have sanctified, that which I have made clean, don't call to be unclean. Hmm? And then now he was given further instructions. There are people coming for you. Huh? I remember me, there's somebody who used to tell an another one, um, there is something I used to give somebody in the morning. And um, so one of them, one person would say, no, so and so, they are coming for you. Hmm? Yeah. He's coming. Of course, I was to give him some, um, some medication. Hmm? So they would say, no, funga mlangu wako, he's coming. <laughs> but the guy that was, uh, was being uh, administered to, knew this is medicine for me. So he would keep the door open. <laughs> or he would come and wait at the door so that he can receive his medicine. Hmm? He, Peter was told, there are people coming for you. And please, go with them wherever they will tell you to go. So when the guys came from Cornelius, a Gentile, eh? and you know Peter had been... Um, uh, had been called to go to the Jews. He was a Jew. Hmm? When he went there, he ministered and people received the Holy Spirit. Gentiles received the Holy Spirit. It's recorded in the scriptures. Amen. So, the Spirit of the Lord will remove every kind of prejudice. You will not look at yourself, eh, Sister Frida, and say I'm a foreigner in Kenya. No, you are an integral member or um, part of Kenya for the time that you are here. Amen. Amen. Topist and Mary, eh? don't say we are Ugandans. That one is a Kenyan now. <laughs> <laughs> Florence is a Kenyan. Hmm? Don't say you are near, you are Ugandans. No. It does not matter. All the prejudices eh, against Ugandans and against Ugandans against Kenyans is removed. Amen. We are brethren. We are sons and daughters of God. Amen. Regardless of uh, your tribal or uh, ethnic or tradition or cultural or whatever, all those things are removed. There is no Greek and there is no Jew. There is no male and there is no female when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon us. 
we look at everybody and we respect everybody regardless of who they are. Amen. Amen. The old will work with the young. The young must make sure that they do not despise the old. Because the old people, the older people, everywhere, all of us, wherever we are, there are people who are all the time older than us. We'll always have people who are older than us, and those people have more experience. They have made enough mistakes, and they have learned from those mistakes. So they will make sure that the young people don't make the same mistakes and fail the way we failed, okay, in doing certain things. We will make sure that our young people are doing things in a different way, not the same way that we did and we failed. The old people should make sure that they work with the young people because the young people have strength. They have innovation. They are creative. They can do things very fast and they can you know, stay for very many hours doing certain things. There are those of us, if you travel from here by road to Mombasa, you need three days to recover. Hmm? There are young people who will travel from New York, huh? get here, then you give them, they have just arrived half an hour, you give them the Bible, now you take the meeting and preach, and they will preach like they have been in this city for three months, yet they still have jet lag. <clears throat> Some of us, when we travel, we sleep during the day and we, we, we wake up during the night and we become so disoriented because we have come from a different time zone. May the Lord help each one of us that we can work together, the older people and the younger people. Somebody said, when they are old people and young people. Let the old people not remind the younger ones that they are young. Okay? I will take it again. <laughs> the older people, you are Kinamburu, hmm? don't look down on the young people and tell them, do you know that you are young? Eh? Don't keep reminding them that they are young. But the young people should not forget that whoever is talking to them is older. Okay? The older ones should not remind the young people that they are younger, and the younger ones should not forget that um, the ones talking to them are older than them, they have more experience, they have eaten enough salt and cleared several granaries, as some people used to say in a certain language. Somebody said truth is parallel. Tell your neighbor truth is parallel. As it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. Truth is parallel. Some of you didn't say. Tell your other neighbor. Amen. When we are doing things in the natural, the same way there is a replica of the same in the spiritual. Hmm? The way we do things, the way we, we behave, the way we react, the way we act, the spirit of the Lord does a similar thing or the new, whatever is in the, fl in the flesh, whatever is in the natural, there is a replica of the same in the, the, the spiritual. Hmm? We were saying some time back that um, wind is powerful. Wind is very powerful. It can um, turn turbines or windmills and produce electricity that can um, run many machines. Huh? And the spirit of the Lord is more powerful than the wind. Because the Spirit of the Lord can do a mighty transformation of the whole world in a split second. 
Amen? Amen. As the wind um, is, um, uh, is strong, so is the power that there is in the spirit of the Lord. Hmm? Just like, you know, uh, we can, um, we, we need wind and we need breath. Eh? The way we need wind and we need breath, both of them are invisible. How many of you have seen wind? The east wind. Okay. Breathe in. Hold it there. You cannot breathe out. I know some of you are struggling. <laughs> some of you are struggling. Huh? But you know, if you breathe in and you hold it, and you cannot hold that breath in for 30 seconds, you have a challenge. Your lungs have a challenge. You need some, some attention. Try to do that, okay? You just breathe in. And hold it for at least 30 seconds. Say, count one up to 30. Before, without breathing out, when you start, you know, feeling like, you know, <laughs> some of us after 10 seconds, others after 20 seconds, others after uh, 25 seconds, whatever, we start, you know, struggling and, and uh, like trembling. May the Lord help us. Yeah, you need to hold it for at least, if, if you are very healthy, you can hold it for a minute. If your lungs are very healthy, you breathe in and you hold it for a minute. Why are you looking at me like, you know, <laughs> when people dive into water hmm, to look for something that, that went in there and somebody stays in there for one and a half minutes, was he breathing? <laughs> Was he breathing? Yes. So you, that's why you, know, you need to be very healthy for you to be a diver. Yes. Sister Sando. Mm. <laughs> Try and practice it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wind and breath are very important to each one of us. So is the spirit of the Lord. When you breathed in and you breathed out, did you see the breath that you blew out? No. It's invisible. Unless there are some particles, there is something that is happening. Maybe there is cold around. It's very cold. So when you breathe out warm air, it forms steam and you can see steam, okay? But when we are in a place like this, you will not see it. So, the way wind and breath are invisible, so is the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is invisible, but the effects of the Spirit of the Lord is visible, okay? The effect is visible. We all need breath to live physical lives. Just as we need the Spirit of the Lord to live a spiritual life. You cannot live a spiritual life without the Spirit of God. Amen? So we need the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. We need the Spirit of God. We need to move in the way that the Lord has purposed for us. The Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit. This Spirit of the Lord or the Holy Spirit was there right in the beginning. And he made sure that um, everything that was created, he participated that's why, you know, God was speaking, let there be this, and it happened. Let there be that, and it happened. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the whole earth. 
establishing that which God the Father was speaking. The Spirit was establishing it or bringing it into effect. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God worked at creation and everything that was created was created by the power of the Holy Spirit, including you and me. Hmm? You are created by the Spirit of God. You are convicted of sin by the Spirit of God, and that's how now you became a child of God. He is the one who convicted you. He is the one who drew you. He is the one who caused you to um, confess your sins, to repent, to turn away from wickedness, and bring you into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord worked at creation to bring everything to, everything that is created, living and non-living, they were created by God, and the Holy Spirit brought it into effect. The Holy Spirit spoke through um, Moses and he told Pharaoh, let my people go. And even when Pharaoh became hardened, the Spirit of the Lord made sure that he challenged him. He challenged him, he convicted him until one day he said, all of you, out. I don't want any one of you, I don't want any Israel, any Jew, any Hebrew in this land of Egypt. All of you go. And they went. And, but before they went, they made sure. Huh? They were told that go to your masters and get all the gold that you can, all the silver that you can, you know, what, what, you know what was happening? God was preparing for the work of making the tabernacle in the desert. <laughs> okay? He was preparing. So he made sure that these people got all the gold, all the silver, and all the copper, and whatever it was, all the precious metals they carried. They went to their masters and said, give me. Hmm? I'm not borrowing. Give me. The way you go to your employer and you say, I've done one, two, three, four, five. Now I want a promotion. Hmm? I want a pay rise. Hmm? And you say, you know, look here. You know, yeah, I qualify because I've done. When they, they do evalu your evaluation, they get, you know, you have actually done those things. You have evaluated yourself. And you say, I cannot continue. I cannot have accomplished so much and then you just leave me eh? yeah, earning the same things. Do you know that we need to ask the Lord and trust the Lord to empower us so that we will be so wealthy, so wealthy, that even when the fuel price goes to 500 shillings per liter, hmm? we will not feel so much because if uh, Wamuyu, you are earning a million a day hmm, and you have to spend 2,000 shillings eh, on fuel a day, what is that? Because tomorrow another million is coming. Okay? We need to trust the Lord. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. And who are the righteous? Are you sure you are righteous? Then why are you struggling? Why are you complaining and murmuring? Arise! The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is powerful. The Spirit of the Lord is important to each one of us. He made the children of Israel who had been slaves to be very rich people, very wealthy. They left Egypt with all the gold they could carry, all the silver they could carry, all the copper they could carry, all the 
whatever you, whatever metals they were they were carrying, eh? precious metals they were carrying. I think they also had diamonds with them. They went with them. Riches. They plundered the riches of Egypt and went with it into the desert, into the promised land. Why don't we do the same thing? Eh? There are so many wealthy people in this land who are unrighteous. Why don't we trust the Lord that he may transform us into all this wealth, transfer the wealth to us so that we may use it for the kingdom, for the expansion of the kingdom? Hmm? What does the Bible say about the spirit of the Lord? Luke chapter 4 verse, from verse 18. Luke chapter 4 from verse 18. We are told, The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Hallelujah. And he continues and continues and says to declare the year of the Lord's what? Hallelujah. Hmm? The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Is the spirit of the Lord upon you? Yes. Why is he upon you? Because he has anointed you. And the anointing is not for us to just go saying, I'm, an, I'm anointed. Walk around, you know, man of God, man of God, with the knee, with um, uh, bodyguards all over. Hmm? And some five of them running ahead of you. To, to, to push everybody, huh? everybody out of the way because the man of God anointed is coming. Hmm? As if, if you know, if um, uh, you touch the man of God, the anointing will disappear. Hmm? <laughs> why, why, why do you, people, you, you men of God and women of God carry bodyguards with you wherever you go? Whom are you afraid of? The devil? Or what? As for me, I keep telling people, I don't need anybody to, be, to, to, to guard me. No. Hmm? I am a shepherd. I want to need to be close to the sheep, you know, hug them. Huh? These little ones, carry them up huh? and, um, you know, uh, smell how they are smelling. <laughs> huh? The little ones, you know, babu, babu, you know, I carry them up. Hmm? I tickle them. Huh? When I carry them, I, when I lift them, I tickle them. And they say, nee, digidi again, digidi again. <laughs> huh? Yes. So, we need to be people who know that we are anointed. He has anointed us to preach the gospel. The gospel to the poor. Don't allow anybody to protect you from the poor. Don't allow anybody to keep people away from you if you are anointed. Those people need that which is in you, you the anointed. Huh? To preach the gospel to the poor. Have you preached to everybody that needs to, needs to hear the word of God? No. There are many millions in this land of Kenya that need your ministry. Don't keep hiding yourself. Amen. Amen. Preach the gospel to the poor, those who are poor in the spirit. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Even as we are here, there are many people who are brokenhearted because of various challenges that they have gone through in the course of the week. Or even from this morning, eh, some people are here and they're brokenhearted. The spirit of the Lord is upon you and upon me to heal them. Amen. To heal, the, he has sent you to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent you to proclaim liberty to the captives 
Hmm? People are um, held up in all kinds of things. When we talk about, you know, um, LGBTQ, whatever it is, whatever they call them, and there is also there's under, under term they have added there. Huh? There are people who are bound in that. Huh? They say that it's my orientation. You are supposed to be orientating yourself or being orientated to the ways of the Lord, huh? not to perversion. There are people who are held up in masturbation, homosexuality, lesbianism, all kinds of things. They just can't get out. You, we need to proclaim liberty to these captives, captives of in all kinds of sinfulness and wickedness. We need to proclaim liberty to them. We need to tell them what the word of God says, hmm? not what the Supreme Court says. Huh? The Supreme Court says that, you know, uh, these people are at liberty to, um, reg to, ha to have their organization registered. I said, what kind of nonsense is that? Hmm? Where our systems are captivated, where our legislators have been captivated, where um, uh, our judiciary has, uh, has gotten into captivity, where our executive has gotten into captivity, where our business people, our spiritual people have gotten into captivity, we need to decree freedom and liberty in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let everybody be free. When, 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 when the, the sun sets you free, you are free. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Amen. We must be free from all kinds of things. He has sent us hmm, to declare the recovery of sight to the blind. There are many blind people in this world, many. Some are blinded spiritually, some are mentally blind, some are physically blind, some are uh, domestically blind, some are emotionally blind, socially blind. We need to decree the recovery of sight to all the blind. Hmm? And then we also need to set at liberty those who are oppressed oppressed by the enemy, oppressed by the economy, oppressed by whatever it may be. Whatever thing is oppressing you, the Lord has anointed you. You. Eh? Not your pastor. Eh? Not your presbyter. Not your apostle. Not your prophet. Not your evangelist. The Lord has anointed you to do all these things. And you can claim them in your own life. And I think it is good that we should do the same. We should claim these things into our lives. We should claim them now. And we will move according to the leading of his spirit. Hallelujah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon you. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Say, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. You cannot do this if you yourself are not freed from them. You cannot... Um, uh, Preach the gospel to the poor when you yourself are poor. You must be rich in the word of God. You must be rich with the gospel, full of the gospel. You must come out of poverty because poverty 
even physical poverty and material poverty is um, a mentality. Okay? It's a mentality. Why do I say so? Somebody will be given 5,000 shillings because they're in problems. And within a very short time, that money is gone and they can't account for it. And they remain where they were. You go back after one hour or two hours, or you give them 5,000 shillings in the morning, you go back in the evening, they are poorer than they were because they have used that money and fleezed at the same time on their phones. So, me and me, 1,000 shillings, and me shall 500. There are people who will remain in a state of poverty. You have to get out of it in order to help others. You come out of it when you have a testimony that I was there and now I am out. If we were together with you in this poverty, in that poor state, and now I am better off, I'm more prospered, and I'm giving you a testimony. Won't you listen to me? Yes. Won't you want to know, how did you get out of this? There are people who are broken-hearted. You cannot help them when you are broken-hearted yourself. Mm -mm. You have to get out, be on a higher level, so that you can hold somebody's hand and pull them up to where you are. If you are broken-hearted and you are up here, and you are trying to help a broken-hearted person who is down there, and you start pulling one another, you know what will happen. The one down there will obviously be stronger than you, and will pull you down to where they are. To proclaim liberty to the captives, if you are in captivity, you cannot help somebody out of that captivity. Prisoners do not release fellow prisoners unless it's a prison break. <laughs> unless they break out of the prison. But they cannot go signing release orders for their colleagues. No, they can't. So, we need to make sure that no, we get out of that captivity we are free people. Then now, from then on, we can now help those ones in captivity. We cannot lead people who are blind, yet we are also blind. Both of us will fall in a pit. Get your sight straight first. Hmm? Have your sight clear. Then you can help the blind. And liberty for those who are oppressed. You cannot help oppressed people when you feel more oppressed. Eh? You sit down with people and they're talking about how life is tough in Kenya. Hmm? Some have gone back to what they used to say, Navumilia kuwa mu Kenya. Some are saying that today. Navumilia. Instead of when you are sitting with people who are saying Navumilia kuwa mukenya, and you yourself you are also familiar in kuwa mukenya, hmm? you are just you know bearing it to be a Kenyan, yeah? you are persevering. You cannot help those people who are oppressed. You have to come up and say, as for me, I'm not part of that. I'm not part of part to that. No. As for me, I'm blessed, I'm anointed, I'm strengthened, I'm empowered, huh? I'm equipped, and I'm going to higher heights. Amen. 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 Even when things are so dry, I will invest and I'll get very good returns Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 What did Isaac do when it was drought? He planted and he had a mighty harvest when other people were struggling. When they could not even plant, they could not go and plow their grounds. Isaac went and planted, and he had a mighty harvest. That is what we need to do. 
Mm? Brother Ni, Brother Joseph was telling us about you know, investing. Huh? When the IPOs come out, take money, go and invest. When you, know, you have invested, huh? uh, a few months later, you, when, when those knee shares go up, you can sell them. Huh? Even if the loan you took, you go and repay the loan and you remain with some in your pocket. You have paid the loan and you have some money in your pocket. That's what some of us did when Ken Jen came. Hmm? We went, bought the shares. Was it, tw was it 12 shillings or what, what was it? 9.5. 9, 9, 9 9, 9, 9, and a few weeks later, the thing had shot to 40 shillings, and people were yearning to buy shares. Aye. <laughs> if, you, if you bought 1,000, if you bought 2,000, eh? now, you know, <laughs> you put in 9,000, multiply by 40, what is that? Then you get your knee, your, 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 you, 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 you pay back your 995, you remain with something in the pocket. You are a rich man, richer than you were a month ago. Amen. Amen. We have to have our eyes open. We have our minds open. Hallelujah. Amen. We, let's trust the Lord. The spirit of the Lord God is upon you. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. Amen. Are you anointed? You may be here. We are talking about this anointing. We are talking about the spirit of God. You can only enjoy the presence of the Lord. You can only move according to the leading of the spirit if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you have accepted him to come into your life, forgive your sins, wash you, and make you a child of God. Maybe you're here, and we are talking these things, but they are passing above your head because you are not in this line. We would like to give you an opportunity to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. You're here, you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, you, you know you are not saved. And when you are not saved, you are not a child of God but you'd like to become a child of God so that you may receive his spirit, so that his presence may be with you, so that he may anoint you out of poverty, get you out of brokenheartedness, get you out of captivity, get you out of blindness, and get you out of oppression, give you eternal life. Are you there? If you put up your hand, we'll pray with you. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Do you want to receive Jesus Christ? Anyone wants to receive Jesus Christ? Okay, let's stand. All of us, we pray together. Our Father and our God, we are in your presence right now. Your spirit is hovering upon each one of us. We pray, Almighty God, that you fill us afresh with your presence. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your fresh anointing. We pray that you empower us. We pray that you equip us to go forth, O oh Lord, to preach the gospel to the poor, to decree, O oh Lord, all those who are oppressed to be freed, everybody in captivity to be freed, O oh Lord. We pray, Almighty God, that you empower us, that as we go out, O oh Lord, every blind eye be open, every deaf ear be open, every tongue that has been stuck, that has been dumb, O oh Lord, be freed in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be loose completely. May your presence, your anointing, your power and your victory rest upon our lives. We pray, Almighty God, that you transform every area of our lives. Change us, O oh Lord, from glory to glory. Yes. Lift us to higher heights, O oh Lord, yes. that we may lift your name and glorify you, that we will all the time lift your name higher and higher. And when our praises go up, O oh Lord, and reach your throne of heaven, O oh Lord, your glory shall come down. Your glory shall come down. 
your glory shall come down and we will honor, we will praise you. We will bless you and glorify you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.